Hello and welcome to the Chapter 6 podcast on Section 6.5. Today we're going to be talking about quantum mechanics and introducing the concept of atomic orbitals. Quantum mechanics is basically, again, a, a collection of some of the things that we've talked about with respect to uncertainty and, and Bohr and Planck and Einstein. Okay, And um, basically it's an incorporation of wave and particle duality. Uh, with respect to subatomic particles, also including electrons, but also many other uh, particles that we won't discuss in this course. Uh, it includes also wave mechanics, and it becomes very, very complicated at this point, so a lot of theory and detail will kind of be missing. We're going to do uh, so a fair amount of hand-waving here, and you know, as you continue in your, in your careers in science, you'll probably get into it a little bit more, uh, especially as your math uh, competency increases. What Erwin Schrödinger did is he applied a mathematical model to the movement of electrons, and um, he came up with what we call a wave function. And um, based on the math, and basically in a roundabout way, he mathematically modeled the attractions of the particles in the nucleus to the electrons on the outside and tracked what kind of movement would be most likely. So these are probability maps, um, and so these are densities. So where in this figure on the right where it's darkest is where you're more likely to find electrons. Where it gets lighter it's possible to find electrons there but it's less likely than closest to the nucleus where it's the darkest. Um, what he found uh, is not only the wave-like motion but also that um, electrons tend to collect in these little dense areas called orbitals. These orbitals have uh, their own f mathematical functions. They have corresponding energies and shapes. Well, while we won't get into the, the math that defines some of the shapes, we will talk about quantum numbers that kind of emerge from the orbital and wave function models. There are three quantum numbers to be aware of, and these are related to some of the things that we talked about if you've had chemistry before when we discussed energy levels and sublevels. Um, but the math-based way to, to talk about this is to talk about the quantum level, quantum numbers N, L, and EB sub L. N will always be a positive non-zero integer. So 1, 2, 3, etc. And that corresponds to the principal energy level and basically corresponds to how far away you are from the nucleus. The closer you are, the lower the, the number. The azimuthal quantum number, or L, has values from 0 to N minus 1. And 0 to n minus 1 will, um, will again, it, it, it's based upon whatever particular value of, of n we're dealing with. Uh, these azimuthal numbers will define the shape of the orbital. And we'll talk more about the shapes um, in a little bit, or maybe in the next lecture. The m sub l number, the magnetic quantum number, is has values, again, integers, just like l and n, from negative l to l, including 0. And this describes the orientation of the orbital in space. So we have the shape of the orbital, the orientation, um, and this is like spatial where it is in three-dimensional space. Okay. There's also a fourth quantum number that isn't discussed in much detail, and this is m sub s, and this is the magnetic spin quantum number, and usually it's either negative one-half or positive one-half, which describes the path of the electron within the uh, within the orbital, and we'll talk more about these in a moment, too. So, for those of you who've had chemistry before, there is a relationship between 1s, 2s, 2p, their number of orbitals, and the values of n, l, m sub l, okay? So, if I'm in quantum number, if I'm in the first principal energy level, remember, l could be n minus 1, um, from 1 to n minus 1, so, or, uh, n minus 1, so to 0. And so with this one, um, because L is n minus 1, the only possibility for n is 0. And zeros, if you look at these for principal energy levels 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and whenever the L is 0, the shape will be an S sublevel. This S might not mean much to you for those of you who haven't had chemistry yet, but these letters correspond to particular shapes. The value of M sub L, this basically tells you how many 
how many orbitals are within each sublevel type. So we have 1s. Because it's 0, it can go from negative L to L, so this is just 0 for all of the s's. But notice how when you have p and the value of L is 1, it goes from 1, 0 to negative 1. And if those of you have had chemistry before, you know that p holds 3 orbitals, right, within the sublevel type. And this is one of the mathematical representation of that. So this would represent one orbital, another orbital, and a third one for p. These, remember, have five, and notice how it varies from negative from two to negative two. So one, two, three, four, five, which is why these have five orbitals. And then for f, negative three to three, which is seven, corresponds to the number of orbitals as well. And we'll we'll work more with this in class. Um, they always on the AP exam love to love to throw quantum numbers and discuss you know which ones are permissible and which ones are not. And we'll talk about these and we'll do a few of these for practice in class. Um, in terms of orbitals themselves, um, there is an electron shell, and these are col a collection of orbitals. I call these sublevel types, but this book calls it electron shells. A subshell is a specific orbital. Uh, that has the same number of n and l sub value uh, n and l values. So, for instance, um, the s's would all be zero, p's would all be one, and so on. And each cell will consist of a certain number of subshells, and it corresponds to zero to n minus one, as we said before. And then each one will have a specific number of orbitals, which we call m sub l. And then the total number of orbitals within a shell will always be n squared. Um, we can also represent um, these orbitals and these quantum numbers within, with, an, with an energy diagram that looks like this, where energy is the y-axis and the positions of the, of the various sublevels within a, a principal energy level can be listed like this, where uh, one, the S's will line up the P's and the D's, and as we go further out, um, you know, we, if we fill this order. So this is one way to represent it, and you'll see other ways as well. Um, ground state, just so you know, is the lowest possible energy level for an electron. And an excited state is when an electron moves to a higher level other than the ground state. And this is something you probably already knew, but just wanted to throw it out there. And that's it for now.